हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो इफ आई एम विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल प्लीज गिव दिस वीडियो अ थम्स अप एंड आल्सो राइट इन द कमेंट सेक्शन दैट ऑडियो एंड वीडियो आर वर्किंग फाइन हेलो डॉक्टर बिरनेला सो आई एम आई विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल Uh, please give me thumbs up if both my audio and video are working fine or uh, in the comments in the live chat just uh, type why if audio and video are working fine thank you so much dr sahil singla for the confirmation so without any further ado let us uh, begin this session where we are going to see the recall questions of the dermatology uh, of inct uh, which was uh, Uh, which happened on 8th of may thank you so much so a uh, one small disclaimer these are recall mcqs image based questions so there could be some deficiencies there could be some options which were not able to uh, be recollected by a few students so if there are any such minor changes you which you think uh, uh, about these questions please do let me know in the comment section please do know in the uh, do let me know in the chat section and do like the video and subscribe to the channel if it was helpful some mistakes might be there please do pardon me and these questions are very very important for neat 2022 as well so myself dr madhuran shinwas friends i hope you all know these questions are important for neat pg inct and fmg so please make a note of this so yes now let us you know quickly start looking at the questions so this was one of the questions which students have told me that it was asked as a match the following type of question pt uh, so you need to match these uh, diseases and the scales which can be seen in this uh, condition so as you can see here pt reasis roja i, I have uh, in fact uh, already matched all these you know diseases and the scales and have given you the uh, Correct match the following uh, right away in this slide. So in Petrasis rosea, yes, collared scales are seen, and in Petrasis versicolor, which was earlier called as Tinea versicolor, yellow brownie scales will be seen. Brownie scales will be seen. Soriasis, micaceous, or they are also called as silvery white scales will be seen. And there is one condition called as Petrasis lichenoides chronica, in which mica-like scales can be seen. So these are all the correct. Uh, ma matches or match the following of the diseases and the scales which can be seen. So basically, what is a scale? The abnormal shedding or accumulation of the stratum corneum in visible flakes is called as scaling. So usually, the stratum corneum, whenever it sheds off from the body, it will not be visible. But in certain uh, diseases, this will be visible in the form of scaling. So there are so many types of scaling out of which I will try to highlight the most important ones. so just follow whatever i am highlighting collared scale it is presenting pitrasis rosea pitrasis rosea so basically what is this peripherally attached scale will be there and centrally detached scale so if you observe this in a pictorial representation then you will remember it for longer duration so this is the collared scale where the scale is attached at the periphery of this annular lesion this is a annular lesion and if you observe carefully the scale is attached to the periphery of this lesion periphery of this lesion and this center central part of this lesion is not having any scale or any scale uh, remnants being attached uh, to so that is collared scale now coming to rest of the other uh, scale so perforaceous scale or brani scales so the name perforaceous is uh, very classically used because the causative organism is malsis of perfor and the disease is pitrasis versicolor and the other type of scale is ichthyosiform scale which is seen in ichthyosis vulgaris basically fish like scales will be seen in this condition and other one is soriasis very very important where micaceous scales will be seen and basically it is nothing but silvery white scale so now let us see the soriasis scale so this is the scaling which can be seen in soriasis which is described as micaceous or we can also call a silvery white scale silvery white scale and you are able to see the classical lesions which are well defined erythematous to salmon pink colored blocks which are have which are surmounted by this micaceous or silvery white scaling this is 
psoriasis this is psoriasis lesion okay so that was uh, psoriasis scale and the other one is greasy scale which is important for examination purposes and it is seen in seborrheic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis here moist yellow brown oily scaling will be present over the seborrheic areas and yes mica like or it is also called as wafer like scale this is seen in pityriasis lichenoides chronica very important uh, conditions are the ones which i am highlighting so in plc which is pityriasis lichenoides chronica thin adherent mica like scale is attached at the center of a lichenoid firm reddish brown papule and free at the periphery so here if you observe it is exactly opposite to that of a collarate scale so here the scale is attached at the center of the lesion at the center of the lesion so if you consider this to be a lesion scaling will be present attached at the center of the lesion and there is going to be a periphery which is free or devoid of any scaling this is characteristic of pityriasis lichenoides chronica and i hope you might have uh, remembered this netherton syndrome we have discussed in the previous year questions of uh, uh, aims netherton syndrome in which we discussed very important hair finding trichorexis invaginata and trichorexis nodosa in this there is an association uh, called as ichthyosis linearis circumflexa in which we can see double edged scale double edged scale and in femphigus they we have this femphigus foliaceous variant in which corn flake scales will be seen scale separates from the lesion leaving a non exudative red base so just remember femphigus foliaceous corn flake scales are seen so this we have seen and this is this is pityriasis lichenoides chronica which is having this mica like scales mica like scales so rest of the ones uh, just try to remember ichthyosis hystrix there is going to be hystrix like scale so in the name itself the characteristic of the scale is present and one more important image based question harlequin ichthyosis the type of scale which the child is going to have is a coat of armor variety of scale will be seen okay uh, these are the important ones and this is p versicolor pityriasis versicolor which was earlier called as tinea versicolor in which we can see brani brani scales or which are also called as perforaceous scales perforaceous scales and you are able to see the scaling which is present and most importantly if you observe carefully there are hypopigmented macules which are arranged perifollicularly and slowly slowly these individual perifollicular macules they are going to coalesce with each other to form a larger patches okay so that is a classical description of p versicolor and now kasovitz law is related to kasovitz law is related to just type in your comment uh, whatever you feel is the answer in the chat section live chat section friends yes what uh, what is the answer which you feel is correct for this question yes anybody kasovitz law is related uh, with yes kiran says it is option 3 just please remember it is congenital syphilis congenital syphilis so there are some important laws which you must remember which are related to syphilis so this is a summary of this but let us see one by one so kasovitz law these are all associated with uh, congenital syphilis so what is kaso uh, kasovitz law which is also called as dide's law it emphasizes that the rate of the vertical transmission in untreated mother significantly drops significantly drops with the passage of the time with the passage of the time so what does this mean the longer the interval between the infection and the conception better is the outcome better is the outcome of the child so simple uh, you know uh, statistics it is believed that transmission rate drop from 70 to 
hundred percent which can occur during the primary syphilis as compared to that of only ten percent of the transmission to the fetus in the case of late latent disease. So this is what is called as Cassowitz law. This is what is called as Cassowitz law, and this was what is asked in the uh, this INSCT exam. And not only this, there are two more laws which you must be aware of. One more is Coley's law, which is also called as Baum's law. Baum's law. And what does this uh, uh, you know uh, mean? Is in simple terms, uh, let us uh, first see what did Coley thought. Coley is uh, one scientist or dermatologist, whoever it is. At that time. He did not know, he was ignorant that the mother already had syphilis, that the mother already had syphilis. So, he coined this, he made this law. In the, uh, What does this law uh, state is that a child born to apparently asymptomatic mother, asymptomatic mother, apparently asymptomatic. That is, clinically, the mother is not having any symptoms whatsoever of syphilis, but uh, in her body already trypanopalidum are present with no signs of venereal symptoms that is what is apparently asymptomatic means and presence with syphilis after few weeks would infect the healthiest nursemaid but not its mother okay what does this mean is the you know child was born to asymptomatic mother with no sense of venereal symptoms and presence with syphilis after few weeks that is the child gets the manifestations of the syphilis uh, that is in the early syphilis, early congenital syphilis i hope all of you know this triad there will be uh, there will be a rhinitis there is going to be vesiculobullous lesions of the palms and soles and also hepatosplenomegaly so with all these symptoms when the child presents that child can infect the healthiest of the nurse maids that is the nurse who are handling this child but not its mother but not its mother why what was the reason the simple reason the simple logic which Kohli did not know was that the mother was already already having syphilis okay this is Kohli's law and Profita's law it simply states that Apparently healthy baby born of a syphilitic mother cannot be infected by our mother during suckling due to suckling or by a wet nurse. So before this, uh, just let, uh, let me tell you Coley's law. How can you remember Coley's law? Coley's law, you can remember Cooley, Cooley. Cooley, uh, Cooley number one, I hope you might have seen the movie. Uh, that is whoever works. So, simply remember the, that the infected child can infect the coolie. Who is the coolie who will take care of the child? It is nursemaid. So, the child can transmit the disease to the nurse who is the coolie. But not the mother. It is coolie's law which you can remember. And what is Profita's law? A very, very easy uh, you know, understanding of this law is simple. A non-syphilitic child born of syphilitic parents is immune. This is what is Profita's law. A non-syphilitic child born to syphilitic parents is immune. What does this mean? Just combine the first law, Kasovitz law and Profita's law. So, uh, let's say for example if a woman uh, uh, you know is, ha is having syphilis and she was having pregnancies uh, in a row for 10 years okay the first child is going to be severely affected and the 10th child 10th child 10th child is probably not going to have any manifestations of the syphilis so this is what is Kasovitz law uh, and in this Profita's law also can uh, can be understood and this 10th child most likely can be non-syphilitic child who is born to syphilitic pa uh, parents can become immune can become immune we can say this is immune this is profita's law okay i hope this is understood lemon soda one yes akshara one very good pdf after class yes dr akash uh, so the only request for all of you who is watching this video please hit that like button and if i get at least minimum of 50 likes in this video i will understand that this video was helpful for the students and i will share this you know as a pdf version in my telegram uh, you know channel and group the links for telegram are there in the description below please do hit that like button and at least give 50 likes for this video Okay, so that I will get motivated and I feel that this uh, uh, session was helpful for all of you. So now let us move on to the next question. Dermatomal distributed uh, polymorphic lesions in old man who has sensation of spider crawling when sleeping. 
and this type of uh, you know image was given this was what students uh, told me so what do you think is the answer for this question your time starts now you are having only 20 seconds to mark the answer for this question is it herpes zoster is it varicella or is it icd or acd yes come on friends what do you feel is the answer for this question this was the you know uh, actual question body which most of the students told me was asked in the actual inct exam okay kiran says herpes zoster right so rest of the others please try to you know mark your answer srikant says yes at it is in fact herpes zoster which is caused by varicella zoster virus varicella zoster virus okay which is nothing but human herpes virus 3 human herpes virus 3 so basically this virus initially it causes uh, what is called as varicella it causes varicella but uh, these virus they are going to lie dormant in the dorsal root ganglion dorsal root ganglion and whenever there is any kind of a trigger any kind of a trigger in the adulthood most likely it the trigger can be anything it could be any form of immunosuppression it could be uh, the usage of the steroids or it could be usage of the immune any immunosuppressive uh, uh, you know medications anti cancer medications or stress stress related uh, uh, tri uh, triggers are also seen in a few patients so whatever may be the stress uh, whatever may be the trigger one of the trigger is can also be a spider bite some students told me that spider bite was mentioned in the question i don't i'm not sure whether the spider bite was given or not but even the spider bite can act as a trigger so whatever may be the case the uh, the hum uh, varicella zoster virus which was lying dormant in the dorsal root ganglion suddenly awakens and uh, you know it passes through the nerve root and it is going to involve a specific dermatome and the lesions of this herpes zoster are going to be produced in a unilateral fashion as you can see the midline these lesions do not cross the midline they will be unilateral and they will be dermatomal in distribution dermatomal distribution and how will the lesions be uh, they are multiple grouped vesicles as you can see here there are multiple grouped vesicles grouped vesicles these are all uh, fluid filled lesions which are called as vesicles and they are all grouped vesicles they are present over erythematous base they are present over erythematous base and if you ask the patient the patient can tell you that the lesion is very very painful very very painful so this is the classical description and what is the most common site of this herpes zoster the most common site of this herpes zoster is over thoracic dermatome over thoracic dermatome and this is also called as shingles the other name for the herpes zoster is shingles other name of herpes zoster is shingles so uh, this is the question and here you can see a uh, spider bite has triggered herpes zoster this was taken from one study uh, in a journal so this is the next question a 10 year old boy complains of joint pain patient had itchy lesions arthritis papules and rash and small nodules are present over the finger uh, was given what is this uh, disease this was what uh, many students have uh, you know told me in the telegram so if this was the question and these were the options Uh, and this was the image please do give a thumbs up to this video and if uh, you can remember if you can remember some students told me that one other option was systemic lupus erythematosus and uh, that's all other other uh, options were unable to be recollected by the students so if you can remember please type in the comment section the uh, you know other options which you can remember juvenile dermatomyositis kiran says option b juvenile dermatomyositis yes if you can remember the option you can please type uh, it in the chat section and if you feel this was the exact image which was asked in the exam today please do hit that like button juvenile dermatomyositis do uh, okay so that's what is uh, what students are telling so if Uh, this was the question which was asked yes in such case the answer is juvenile dermatomyositis juvenile dermatomyositis actually this was a repeat question actually this was a repeat question and this was the uh, july 21 that is in the last year inct this not the exact same question but uh, almost same 
question was asked juvenile dermatomyositis what is the characteristic skin finding yes it is gotten scapules which is the pathognomonic or what it is also called characteristic skin finding it is pathognomonic for juvenile dermatomyositis juvenile dermatomyositis now they have changed the question and they have instead given the clinical image of the gotten scapules whereby you are able to see erythematous scapules which are present over the metacarpophalangeal joint and inter uh, interphalangeal uh, inter joints okay so this is what is given in this image ip joints and mcp joints are having this erythematous raised lesions which are nothing but which are nothing but the gotten scapules gotten scapules and rest of the other uh, you know clues which are given in the question can be present these lesions can be slightly itchy and they need not be you know restricted to knuckles uh, these lesions can also be present over the elbows also and even the patients can experience arthritis as well okay so the answer here is juvenile dermatomyositis but if in case you, you feel that the question was different or option was having some, uh, options were having some other disease which could be a better answer please try, uh, type the uh, in the comment section below so dermatomyositis Uh, so here both skin features and also muscles feature the muscles which are involved are proximal group of the muscles proxim proximal group of the muscles and in the skin very important findings are gotten scapules gotten sign heliotrope rash and there is going to be a shawl sign which can be present over the back shawl sign holster sign and b sign these are some of the important named signs which can be present so gotten sign is violaceous macular erythema which can be seen over the ip and mcp joints and what are gotten scapules if instead of erythema there are papules over the same sides we call them as gotten scapules heliotrope rash is over the eyelids we can see this violaceous hue periorbitally this is called heliotrope rash and shawl sign is this violaceous macular erythema will be present over the upper back and b sign is the same violaceous macular erythema will be present over the v area of the chest and this if it is present over the lateral aspect of the thigh where the police officers wear a pouch which holds the guns it is called as holster sign all these are very important features of dermatomyositis dermatomyositis okay now yeah this is we can say a one liner question active metabolite of cyclophosphamide among the given options is we can say this is a dermato pharmacology integrated mcq if you know the answer for this question please uh, you know write down in the chat section live chat yes active metabolite of cyclophosphamide this is just a fact based question nothing you know nothing uh, uh, any concept or anything the answer for this question is 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide in the body this is taken from wolverton a uh, textbook of uh, you know dermatopharmacology you can see here cyclophosphamide is a pro drug it is converted by the liver to 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide that exists in equilibrium with aldophosphamide so just remember 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide is the active metabolite of cyclophosphamide and uh, there was one question which uh, students told that hpv vaccine what is the schedule of this vaccination in a 9 to 14 year girl 9 to 14 year girl yes uh so was th this schedule given so if this is taken from you can see here uh from 2016 version which is actually uh, used right now so dose uh, one is given at 0 months and dose two is given at 6 to 12 months was what was the exact question students were unable to you know uh, give me the exact question if you uh, remember what is the exact question or what are the other options please do write down in the live chat friends yes anybody if you can remember what were, what was the question and what are the options was the scheduling asked in the question uh, or the number of doses was just asked in the question so if the schedule for 9 to 14 years is asked then dose 1 is at 0 months and dose 2 can be given at 6 to 12 months but if it is the 15 to 26 then three dose series will be utilized so at 0 months uh, the dose 1 is uh, calculated and at 
dose two, that is one to two months, and other dose is given, and a uh, dose three is that given at six months. Yes, friends. So uh, those who are watching, please, please, please do contribute. What was the question, and what was what were the options? Options. So just uh, help me with the options. What was uh, what were asked? Hmm. Okay. So okay, fine. Let uh, if you can remember after uh, this live session is completed. If you remember the options, please put uh, whatever options you feel in the uh, you know comment section below. And this is another question: What is not associated with high risk human papilloma virus? And what is this high risk and low risk? Uh, the risk is we are. comparatively giving the risk uh, profile for the human papilloma virus depending upon how much chances that, that the strains of the hpv can lead to a cancer a cancer okay so low risk simply means that they are less associated with the cancers whereas high risk they are very much associated with the cancer and if these strains are present in a particular individual then more likely there is going to be a development of cancer in those patients cancer in those patients and among the given options uh, see uh, the oropharyngeal carcinoma anal and cervical all of these are associated with high risk human papilloma viruses whereas option d laryngeal papillomatosis is associated with low risk hpv so what are all the high high risk hpvs uh, which are important for you to remember are 16 and 18 are the most important one because they are the, uh, the strains which are associated and responsible for most hpv related cancers the rest others are 31 33 35 39 so these are the ones which you uh, need to remember so uh, a type of hpv that can cause cervical cancer cervical cancer and also anus vaginal vulval penis and oropharyngeal cancers all of these are high risk hpv uh, whereas the one which is associated with laryngeal papillomatosis is hpv very a six variant six variant and it is a it comes under a low risk uh, you know hpv and this was one question which uh, students told me that uh, picture of the medlar bodies that is copper penny bodies was given and we had to choose the correct statement regarding one of the options was sclerotic body so this is what students uh, you know uh, told me that this question was asked medlar bodies which are also called as copper penny bodies which are also called as sclerotic bodies which are also called as muriform bodies so all these are one and the same and all of these are seen in chromoblastomycosis chromoblastomycosis and uh, yes in the option sclerotic bodies was given so if this question was asked and if these options were there if you remember this please do give a like to this video and in fact chromoblastomycosis is also called as verrucous dermatitis it is also called as verrucous dermatitis the other name for chromoblastomycosis why is it called verrucous dermatitis because the patients are going to present with a cauliflower like verrucous growth or a plaque most likely over the extremities and most likely over the foot and this chromoblastomycosis along with mycetoma and sporotrichosis is an example of deep uh, fungal infection due to inoculation of these uh, fungus uh, foncesia pedrosi and uh, clad of yellow para these are going to get inoculated into the deep tissues because of which this clinical manifestation can be seen in these patients clinical manifestation can be seen in these patients okay so and this was another question this is also a fact based question which you can very easily answer if you know hiv defining carcinoma ha, carcinoma are all except so yes invasive cervical cancer non hodgkins lymphoma and kaposi sarcoma all these are hiv defining carcinomas but melanoma is not a hiv defining carcinoma so option c is the answer here and uh, my question for all the students who are watching kaposi sarcoma kaposi sarcoma is associated with one human herpes virus human herpes virus can you ca tell me what is the number of that hhv human herpes virus if you know the answer for this question please write it down in the chat section friends so before that we shall see what are all the aids defining illnesses 
so here you can see i will try to highlight what are all the malignancies so cervical cancer invasive cervical cancer lymphoma uh, which could be non hodgkins lymphoma and you can see here this is kaposi sarcoma these are all the eight defining illnesses okay rest of the infections i hope you might remember from your medicine knowledge microbiology knowledge but these are the malignancies which are hiv defining yes very good kiran gave me the answer it is hhv number 8 which is associated with kaposi sarcoma and this is another question acid fast bacilli uh, you need to identify the option Uh, which are acid fast bacilli so please tell me whether this was the exact question and these were the options which were given actinomycetes nocardia mycobacterium oocysts of isospora and all of the above were the uh, these the options which were given in the question yes lemon soda you are also right absolutely correct so yes friends in meantime just uh, please try to give a like to this video if this uh, questions are uh, exact the same questions and if uh, this video is helpful as it was bacilli was actinomycetes given in the uh, you know options so why because nocardia mycobacterium oocyst of isospora all of these you know are associated with uh, and they are all the examples for uh, acid fastness they can show acid fastness uh but as it was bacilli what was this term and uh, so this is what is acid fastness a physical property that gives a bacterium the ability to resist decolorization of the acids during the staining process staining processes okay m lepre mycobacterium all these are examples for the uh, you know acid fast uh, bacilli just try to confirm uh, this question Uh, because the options which are given by the students they are actually a uh, little bit confusing and these are uh, this uh, you know paragraphs are taken from javets javets textbook of microbiology so let us move on to the next question so this is treatment of an adult with hypopigmented patch so treatment of an adult with hypopigmented patch with feeder nerve and satellite lesions this was the question which uh, the students have recollected and what is the kit and what is the duration for which the treatment has to be given this was what the students uh, recollected and they have you know given me the question so if this was the exact question and if these were the options and this is uh, you know kit a this is kit b this was what students told me so uh, please uh, write down what is the answer which you have marked and was this the question same question and were these the options and was there any other you know different kit colors which were given was a red color kit also given in the you know options if uh, there is any difference or discrepancy from whatever i have posted please do uh, let me know in the chat section friends or in the comment section if you are watching this as a uh, you know uploaded session treatment of an adult so adult is mentioned in the question was it mentioned uh, as adult or was whether it was given that uh, child so please uh, 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 tell me what was the actual uh, question body so basically since it is posi bacillary which is mentioned so we can uh, happily rule out 12 months 12 months options can be ruled out why because in the case of a posi bacillary leprosy the multi drug therapy which is going to be used uh, will be used for a period of 6 months whereas if it was a multi bacillary leprosy then we would have used it for a period of 12 months 12 months okay so lemon soda says option c and kiran uh, says uh, option a and in the question was it mentioned anything about uh, national leprosy eradication program or according to world health organization uh, was this mentioned in the question so posi bacillary not option sir 
Okay. Word not in the question. Okay. Posse bachelor is not mentioned. Fine. Okay. Uh, but by looking at the question, hypopigmented patch is present and there is a feeder nerve and satellite lesions are present. So, th this uh, feed, this nerve thing, why is it given is uh, basically hypopigmented patch, whenever it is present, it could be leprosy or it could be a vitiligo or, or in the early stages. So, to differentiate between those conditions, this clue might have been given, feeder nerve. So, feeder nerve is present. So, we can say that it is related to leprosy. Leprosy. So, it is a leprosy case. And in fact, satellite lesion is also mentioned. So, satellite lesion, if you remember, they are present in BT leprosy, BT Hansen's disease. Uh, one nerve and a few hypopigmented patches with satellite lesion. So, which nerve was given? Was it uh, any, uh, you know, Allar nerve uh, or median nerve? Was this given or a feeder nerve was given? What was given in the uh, question? Can you, uh, anyone tell me? So, feeder nerve is what is uh, given in the question. So, now it is a dicey thing. Hmm. No mention of Allah nerve, median nerve uh, and anything but only feeder nerve is given and satellite lesions were given. So, if this is the case then we can consider this to be a posse bacillary variety of leprosy itself. Posse bacillary instead of a multi bacillary and among the given two kits if you have to ma mark uh, any one option, then definitely it is option A that is green colored kit for a period of 6 months because it is used for possible bacillary and in adults. If there is any difference uh, in the question or in the, uh, you know, color kits, color coding of the kits or in the options, please do let me know in the chat section friends. Nerve name, sir, feeder name was given. Okay, nerve name is not given. Thickened nerve is given. Okay, right. So basically, the BT Hansen's it is going to have some 3 to 10 lesions and there can be satellite lesions present, satellite lesions which can be present. So this is, uh, these are uh, cardinal features which will differentiate between posse bacillary leprosy and multi bacillary leprosy. So hypopigmented hypoanesthetic patch, if there are 1 to 3, we will consider it as posse bacillary and nerve thickening that is Allah now, media now, if those nerves are given, if any of the one nerve is also thickened, then we will consider it as multi leprosy. And in the case of slit skin smear, if it is positive, then we will consider it as a multi leprosy. And so, these are the colors which you can see here. So, uh, for adults, the colors are green and red. So, for posse it is green color and for multi it is red color. Whereas in children, uh, you can see PB is blue color and multi it is brown color. So, these are the kit colors. And one more point which I want to tell all of you is, uh, according to the NLEP, the 2 drug and 3 drug regimen is still uh, used. Whereas in the case of WHO guidelines, all the patients are going to get all the 3 medications. The difference is going to be with duration. So, in positive bacillary patients, it is going to be 6 months, whereas in multi bacillary uh, leprosy, it is going to be for a period of 12 months. Otherwise, according to National Leprosy Eradication Program, for uh, positive bacillary patients, we are going to use only rifampicin and dapsone for a period of 6 months, there will not be any clofazamine. Whereas, in the case of multi bacillary leprosy, the duration will be 12 months and all the 3 drugs are going to be used. And this is the another question, pregnant lady on leprosy treatment has developed type 2 lepra reaction uh, lesions. So, next line of the management in this uh, patient is going to be. So, please uh, write, type down in the, your answer in the chat section friends. What do you think is the answer for this question? So, most likely in the question because kits were given for this question, what I feel is we should follow National Leprosy Eradication Program. National Leprosy Eradication Program itself uh, has to be uh, followed in this question, in the previous question. So, Kiran says option D. Yes, I hope uh, all of you have marked option. So, Amal Roy. Yes, 
according to world health organization posi and multi for both three drugs have to be used the only difference is going to be the duration so yes very good all of you have marked it right yes continue anti leprosy drugs and add steroids continue anti leprosy drugs and add steroids uh this is the right answer so pregnant ladies having leprosy she is on treatment with anti leprosy the blister packs if she develops type 2 lepra reaction so among the given options you might think thalidomide why not thalidomide but please remember thalidomide is a teratogenic agent it is a teratogenic agent so we can uh, easily rule out this and antibiotics uh, uh, some students told antibiotics was one of the options antibiotics have no role whatsoever so we are left out with option a and option d should we stop the leprosy medication and add steroids or should we continue the anti leprosy drugs so please remember the anti leprosy medications they are absolutely safe in a pregnant woman and we have to continue them uh, only thing is we should just add on the steroids add on the steroids and i can uh, i have seen few students asking me a doubt uh, in the telegram uh, uh, stating one question which was asked in one of the apps in that question it was clearly mentioned that the patient was having leprosy the treatment of the patient is completed he was uh, you know released from treatment and now that patient developed type 2 lepra reaction so what is the next line of management in that patient who completed the leprosy treatment in if that was the question option you know uh, a that is uh, option a will not be given in that question in that question it will be mentioned just start the patient on steroids okay then the question and answer will be correct okay but in this question the pregnant lady is already on the treatment and she is it is not mentioned that it she has completed all the blister packs so in such case we have to continue the treatment for a period if it is possible for a period of 6 months and if it is multi bacillary for, for, for a period of 12 months we have to continue the treatment and because uh, she has got type 2 lepra reaction and she is pregnant so we cannot use thalidomide but otherwise the gold standard treatment for type 2 lepra reaction is thalidomide thalidomide is gold standard okay gold standard but again if the question mentions what is the drug of choice for type 1 or type 2 lepra reaction your answer is going to be steroids so both in type 1 and to the drug of choice is steroids just remember this very very important point and that's it friends uh, these were the questions which were asked in uh, this inct may session 2022 i hope this session was helpful please give uh, the hit that like button if uh, the questions and explanation were helpful if you feel any uh, you know controversy or any uh, deviation from the actual questions or options or images or if you feel any other questions were asked please do mention those questions and write down those questions in the comment section friends uh and i hope that this session was helpful if uh, it was helpful please please do hit that like button friends and uh, also if you are not at uh, the member of the telegram group the, there is a the link for the telegram group i will leave it in the in the description the links are there you can join with the help of that and if you have not yet subscribed to my channel youtube channel please do subscribe and also do remember don't stop when you are tired stop when you are done okay so as far as the latest uh, you know no news is concerned may 21st is the neat pg exam so we are done with all the noise around so much of noise we have already heard so many news we have heard stop focusing on all those news which are happening in your surroundings and please 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 continue with your revisions if you have read till this point the only thing which is going to be needed right now is your revisions and revisions and revisions so i did not attend the exam no problem uh, you have you know got the dermatology questions already so most likely there may be few minor 
differences or changes which can happen in uh, you know whatever we have discussed today uh, because this is a raw form of the questions so please pardon me if there were some mistakes which i have made okay and always uh, remember that you can do anything you want to do the only thing which you need to do now is please don't waste your time it is the most precious thing okay you can also follow me on instagram and take this pledge with me that at the end of this class you are going to give the best you are going to get the great rank awesome rank and you are going to achieve the branch of your choice in the state of your choice most likely a free seat of your choice in the pg and first thing which you must remember is the responsibility of your success or otherwise has to be on yourself okay don't uh, throw the blame on anybody family member the exam is not postponed internship this and that so many will be there you can see if a person really uh, works hard even during the internship at the first attempt they can crack even inct exam as well so do not you know uh, throw blame on others okay thank you so much for watching this video uh, if you are having any concerns as i have already told you please do mention in the comment section please please, please do not leave this video without giving a like to this video Thank you so much. Myself, Dr. Madhuri and Shinvas. Uh, we will be live for one more minute, and after that, I will end this live session. Yes, you can, uh, you know, put your concerns in the chat section. About it could be about anything. Uh, we shall be live for one more minute, and after that, we'll call it a day. there could be some questions about which you might have a doubt or query or there may be some additional questions or options which are asked you can let me know in the comment section so that's it friends thank you so much please do subscribe like this video share this video and also comment your concerns thank you so much sarvam shri